to my channel everyone. It is September 10th, 2020 at the time of filming this video. This month is all about habits and goals and every week I am sharing with you one thing that has been helping me along my journey in violin and in life. So before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. And if you want a mini version of this and if you want to listen to me practice, uh, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Violina. It's the same name as this channel. So today, as I promised last week, I'm going to talk about my practice journal. So my practice journal is something that has been evolving over the years. It's a work in progress and it changes depending on what's happening in my life. So these days in New York City, we don't have any concerts. I don't have any auditions coming up anytime soon. It's very difficult to set practice goals for yourself. Um, I noticed not just with myself, but many, many people have the same problem. It's hard to keep practicing every single day when there is nothing coming up. So I'm going to share with you today um, a practice method that has been helping me over the last three or so weeks. So there is a violinist on Instagram named Maria Trykowska, and some of you maybe have seen her channel already here on YouTube and also on Instagram. She posts many, many helpful videos on violin technique and practice and go check her out. They're amazing. And recently she started a 30 day practice challenge and I'm going to share it with you today because I'm actually in the middle of completing my challenge. I am right now on day 19 out of 30 and of course you can reset it every 30 days. So my practice journal actually comes with two things. The first is the practice template that Maria created on her website which I will link below and it looks something like this. So it, this is essentially a bird's eye view of what things you are practicing and which ones you are leaving out. So the idea is on this column right here, you write down either the repertoire or the technical things that you are practicing for the month. Then here in the boxes, you just check mark the, which ones you completed for the day. And this is, this is an empty sheet. And then here is an example of what Maria posted for herself. Of course, these you can change based on your goals. And this is very important. Before you begin your 30 day challenge, I recommend that you make a short list of things that you would like to accomplish that month. So for example, you can pick a couple pieces of repertoire that you've been working on, or you can come up with a list of excerpts that you would like to practice that month. And for technique, you can choose um, which exercises or which etudes you would like to do. So for a very comprehensive list like this, um, it's recommended not to practice everything every day necessarily because otherwise it's a lot of things and it might be really overwhelming. Um, my list is also pretty long. It's not quite as long as this, but there are a lot of things and I need to alternate. So for example, Certain things like long tones or open string exercises, I'll do those every day. I love to start my day off like that. But other, other things like certain boat techniques like spiccato or uh, martelet, I will do those more like every other day because there are many, many other things that I want to cover and it's hard to cover everything in one day. Now, you're also going to notice a trend um, that some things you practice more often than others. And it's just something to observe. I noticed that I really wanted to practice chords more this month, but then I noticed um, after 19 days that I don't practice them as much as I want to. I should really incorporate them in my daily plan more often. So you're just gonna find trends like that, you know, non-judgmentally, just something to notice and you can make tweaks based on that. So once you made your monthly goals, um, you can start with day one. Now, of course, this is just a bird's eye view of things, so you can see the larger scope. And this kind of chart is actually based on a habit tracking chart that was used a lot by Benjamin Franklin for his own life. And 
I call this the Ben Franklin chart because he loved making charts like this for himself and he would just check mark things. Actually, I went to the Ben Franklin Museum in Philadelphia a few years ago and there was a chart that he made for himself like this um, based on what wine he drank that day. He was a big fan of wine. It's kind of funny. So the next step is to combine this with a practice journal. So for that you just need a notebook, you don't need any fancy templates. And you want to start your day the night before. And this is a concept that I mentioned in my video last week. You want to start the night before because the last thing you want to do is wake up in the morning and wonder what you're going to practice that day. So that whole decision making part of what to practice on the same day, it's going to tire you out, it's going to make you indecisive. And it's also going to make you more likely not to practice at all. So this month, I've always been planning the night before. So right here, you write day one. You can write a date, whatever it's for, if you want. Then you can make a list of um, exercises you would like to do or fundamentals. And you can make a list of um, what pieces you would like to practice. Now, for the pieces, I actually don't just write Beethoven Violin Concerto. I'll write, OK, I'm going to practice these measures and I'm gonna try this practice technique. You know, that's how specific I am. So in addition to that, you can also even add how many minutes you wanna spend on each activity. Because before I started this um, challenge, I had a habit of not timing my practice sessions. So in the month before August, Honestly, I have no idea how many hours I practiced. I didn't really time it, but I remember I would always exhaust myself practicing fundamentals. And what I know about myself is sometimes I get obsessive over things like scales, and that makes me spend way too much time on one activity. So by timing yourself, giving yourself a limit of, say, 45 minutes for a piece, you know, just as an example, um, it helps you be a little more organized and get more things done in a specific time frame. So. Once you've given yourself assignment, the next morning you wake up, you go look at this, and you get started. So once you finish doing a practice session on a specific thing, you can just jot down a short note about what you did, um, and write down things like what metronome marking you're up to, um, which measures you practiced, things like that. If for some reason you didn't get to something, you know, just exit out. Um, you can plan it again for the following day, or you can make a different plan for the next day, depending on why that thing didn't get done. So then, very important, at the end of the day, on the back of that sheet, you'll make a short list of wins and challenges. So basically, make a short list of things that went well or things that are improving, which practice techniques are showing results and also make a list of what is really frustrating, what doesn't seem to be working, um, what you need to continue. Sometimes these two might overlap. Um, if a specific practice technique is working and it's showing results but it's still a challenge, chances are you just have to continue using that practice method. However, if you're using some practice method and it's only making things worse, chances are you probably need to change things up. And this is why this list of wins and challenges helps me to decide the next day what to do. So once you've written the wins and challenges list, you are ready to make yourself an assignment for the following day. So you go right day two, repeat the process. And then at the end of the 30 days, you can assess how things went. How close did you get to achieving your goals? Did you achieve them or maybe you surpassed them? Or maybe things went a completely different direction based on other things happening in your life. Um, this is not a judgmental thing, it's just something to observe and notice and decide on what action to take after, um, after you observe that. And that's pretty much it. So this is all I have to share with you. Um, I'm going to link Maria's Instagram and website down below and go check it out. There's a lot of great information there. So if this video has been helpful to you, don't forget to like this video, share it with a friend or a colleague, uh, subscribe, and I will see you next week. And in next week's video, I'm going to talk about my dailies chart, which I've been using for the past almost four years now.
which has been helping me to develop certain habits and it's very much related to this method so i'll talk about it next week and until then i'm signing off see you next week